Hi, it's Eden. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about OCPD, that is Obsessive Compulsive Personality Disorder, and our insatiable need to control everything. <laughs> so let's get to it. If you're not familiar with OCPD, in a nutshell, OCPD stands for Obsessive Compulsive Personality Disorder and it is described as a pervasive pattern of preoccupation with orderliness, perfectionism and mental and interpersonal control. Control, obviously, is one of the core behaviours that make up OCPD and a lot of people with OCPD will exhibit and perform it. Control is a behaviour that permeates a lot of our lives with OCPD. Whether it be control in organising activities, whether it be control in task performance at work or control in managing the behaviour of ourselves or the other people around us, to not be in control or the prospect of accepting loss of control causes somebody with OCPD a lot of distress, a lot of anxiety and it can often lead to aggressive emotional outbursts, which we will talk about in just a little bit. But not accepting loss of control when it happens can really derail progress of living with OCPD. So let's dive a little bit more into control. Control is a behaviour that often stems from our childhood and it is usually fostered by somebody important throughout our childhood and teenage years who invalidated us by taking away our ability to control. If we had over-controlling parents when we were younger, then we are likely to be more controlling as adults because we ha had such loss of control as children or because we were invalidated so much when we did try to take control of ourselves. We may have been told when we are upset to suck it up we may have been told that we weren't allowed to express ourselves emotionally, that we weren't allowed to do things like independent tasks around the house, or we may have been given over expectations where we were expected to be in control of the situation from such a young age. So there's lots of different reasons why it tends to manifest in such a strong way in our adulthood when we have OCPD. Loss of control can be felt in a variety of different ways, whether it be changing plans in a situation where we feel like we've lost control because plans have changed around us. It could be a change in somebody else's mind or a behaviour, a change in the behaviour of the people that surround us. For example, if somebody says no to us when we expected a yes, we feel loss of control. If we have predicted behaviours to be performed by somebody and they do not, then we feel loss of control. If change happens that we weren't expecting, then we feel loss of control. There are just so many things out there that can cause us anxiety and make us feel like we've lost control of a situation. Even criticism. Sometimes when we're criticised, we feel like we've lost control of the situation because we just didn't simply didn't live up to the expectations that we predicted we were going to live up to. Because of this, loss of control causes us to feel overwhelmed. It causes us to feel anxious. It causes us to feel frustrated because we may not know how to remedy the situation. We'll lash out, we'll appear aggressive, we'll appear angry, but really we're just feeling fear we're feeling frustration, we are feeling like we don't know what to do and we're helpless in this situation and the, on the only way that we can alleviate this feeling of being overwhelmed is by lashing out and looking angry when actually we're just scared. There are also a number of reasons why we feel fear or why we feel frustration or why we feel anger when loss of control happens. It could be because we're scared, because we couldn't predict the outcome of this situation and now because we can't predict it, we've lost control of it. 
We might worry that it is our performance that has caused this loss of control, that we just weren't good enough. Like we do love to think and overthink about these sorts of things. Like maybe if we had been nicer, this wouldn't have happened. Maybe if we had been smarter, this wouldn't have happened. Maybe if we were more diligent and we didn't make those mistakes, we could have had a better handle on the situation. Going through these possible scenarios gives us a lot of anxiety because, oh, well, you know, it makes us feel that we're like we're not good enough. It makes us feel afraid that we're not performing to your expectations or to the expectations of the situation that's happening, causing loss of control. We might also worry about the steps that we'll have to take to regain control or remedy the particular situation in which we've lost control in. Or if loss of control is due to an aesthetic change, like something happening around us or things moving without our consent, we're going to get upset because this change, this sudden change without our consent means that we've lost control of the situation. We have lost control of what we felt may have been just right. We may have assembled those things in such a way that we felt was perfect, but then somebody's come along and changed that and that just gives us loss of control. We feel like we've lost control of this, so what's the point of even trying to put these things together in such a nice way because somebody's just going to come along and take that control away from us anyway. We may also just feel really annoyed. We may be feeling really annoyed because what we had predicted or the plans that we have made and painstakingly put all of our time and our energy into are now changing. They are now defunct, they're now invalid and now because of this we've just completely wasted our time. What was the whole point in putting all this energy into this activity if it's changed now? What was the point in that? What, you know, what am I supposed to do to fix this situation now? You know, that annoyance that comes through where we feel like we've now just wasted our precious resources and time is such a precious resource to us. Even though we're very good at wasting it though too. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, we might also just feel that we're stepping out of that deep rigidity. You know, once plans have been made, processes have been confirmed, routines have been set then they're set and changing them means that now we have to rethink ways of trying to regain that control because we have to now analyze and try to work out a whole new strategy behind it so there's just so many different things that come into play when we feel loss of control. And I feel that we're just over, often we overanalyze it too. We often feel like we have lost control of the situation when we haven't, we have just lost a small aspect of control. But with that black and white thinking that we often have that you know very well if you have OCPD, that it's very much all or nothing. So because that one little thing has been removed from the situation, now the whole thing is just completely gone. Now the whole thing just needs to go in the bin because it's just not. Trying to rejig it is just not gonna help. It just has to be binned. It has to be deleted. It has to be gotten rid of altogether. Ultimately though, we know that it's just impossible to control everything around us. We understand that we can't control or predict the behavior of other people, nor can we remedy every single situation we get into where control is lost. The core of our reasons why we can control derail quite a bit of our progress when learning to live with OCPD. We've already had, we already have so many other issues that are just swimming around in our heads that we're trying to make sense of. So assuming that we can control everything in every situation forever and ever is just simply not attainable. So here are some strategies that we can employ when we're feeling like we've lost control of a situation and we need to move through some steps to find acceptance within ourselves and the situation around us. The first strategy is physiological awareness. We need to be mindful of the physiological responses within ourselves when our grip on control begins to slip. We need to be more aware of what we're feeling and where we're feeling it within our body. Whether it be tightness in the chest, whether it be gnawing sensations within our stomach, maybe it's the blood pounding in our ears. Um, these are all indications that we're heading into fight, flight or freeze. And by paying attention to these physiological responses, we can learn more about how to be mindful of moving through them. So letting them pass us by while employing some very basic breathing for instance like square breathing 
which is a technique where you breathe in for four seconds whilst drawing a line and then out for four seconds while drawing another line and then in for four seconds while drawing another line and then out for four seconds to meet up with your original point. So by drawing a square in our brain and breathing and being aware that there are sensations in our body that will pass, it makes it much, much easier to head into the next strategy. The next strategy is if you have the time, give yourself the space to mentally process what's going on. Rather than trying to predict an outcome, rather than trying to assign blame, rather than trying to remedy a situation, instead allow yourself the time and the space to just process all those emotions that you're feeling. To ask yourself questions like, why am I feeling this way? What was the issue that triggered these sensations and what caused such a chaotic response within myself? What can I do to help myself accept and move forward in this situation? And having these kinds of self-reflective questions are really handy because you may not be able to come up with the answer then and there, but you're asking your brain to fetch that information. You're asking your brain a question that it's going to want to close that feedback loop and it's going to fetch the information that will answer the question. If you have a quiet space to do this, you can also journal. Journaling is really great because it just kind of dumps the contents of what's in your brain onto paper. And it also is just nice to kind of empty what's going on in there and putting it down. And as an added benefit, if you feel comfortable with it, you can also bring your journal to either somebody you trust to read it or your personal therapist, but just have somebody else to be able to run their eyes over your thought process and what you're feeling, because you may be, you may find that that person can make some connections or suggest things that will help you make your own connections in your mind as to why you're feeling this way and what caused all this loss of control or what caused the feeling of loss of control to begin with. Remember too to not assign blame. I really have to stress this one out because often when we feel like we've lost control we will just internalize the blame and say that it's our fault. We'll say well you know it's my fault that this happened and I'm stressing this because it's probably not your fault that loss of control has happened. You can absolutely control your reaction to the situation and you can control how you move forward through it. But the whole thing that caused the loss of control was most likely not your fault to begin with. So don't blame yourself. Don't assign blame to yourself or anybody else around you, simply find the space to be able to think and process in self-reflection about what is going on within yourself, within the situation, and why this could potentially be the case. Third strategy is a little bit more unorthodox, but bear with me here for a minute. If you can, find yourself a private space to be able to experience whatever emotions it is that you are feeling. Sometimes we just need five minutes to lose our minds and expel those feelings that we find are brewing inside of us because often we don't know what we're feeling. We don't really know what we're feeling, why we're feeling it and holding on to that emotion, burying it within yourself, like putting it back in that jar, that emotional jar and putting the lid on is just going to make the situation worse because then it is going to come out in other ways. So having that time and that space and that little area where you can just lose yourself for a moment, have a cry, <laughs> scream into a pillow, punch a punching bag, squeeze a stress toy until it pops, take your emotions out and it will make things so much easier when you look more introspectively at what is going on, why you are feeling this and how you can move forward from it. The next thing you can do, the next strategy you can employ is to just simply reassure yourself that what you're feeling is valid. I have talked about this before about how it's hard for us as adults to be able to really grasp how we're feeling because our feelings were invalidated when we were young and invalidated constantly too for that matter. Because we weren't taught how to manage our emotions, because we weren't taught that it's okay for us to feel feelings as children, we often bring that ethos with us as adults. We often bring that ideology that we're not allowed to feel feelings. 
you are. I'm here to tell you right now, you are. You are allowed to feel as many feelings as you want and they can be confusing at times and just overwhelming, but it's okay. It is okay that you're feeling this way. You are human. You are allowed to feel feelings and don't let anybody ever tell you otherwise. By acknowledging that you're allowed to feel this way, it'll make the process of working through it much easier because you're allowing yourself to do it. You're giving yourself permission to work through these feelings. And that's totally okay. It is okay. Eden is here to tell you that whatever you're feeling right now, totally fine. You are allowed to feel the way you feel. It is how you respond and what behaviors you perform that are the difference between good and bad actions. How you respond to a situation is what is going to be perceived as good or bad. Because it's okay that you feel angry if something happens, but it's not okay to punch a wall. It is not okay to hurt somebody because you're angry. But it is okay to go and scream into your pillow. It is okay to go for a long walk to distance yourself from what is making you upset. You know, it's all about how we react to the things around us that make those behaviors healthy or unhealthy. So allow yourself to feel those feelings. I think this is just my mantra, my channel. It's okay to feel feelings. And the next strategy is to share what we have learned. If you are seeing somebody, a personal therapist, which if you are not and you have OCPD, then I do advise that you do a little research and see if you can find somebody that you can speak to, a professional that you can speak to about what is going on in your brain. It's always good to talk to somebody who's smarter than you, and you're pretty smart. If you feel that you can't find a professional that you can trust, or if money is a problem, money is also a problem too, because therapy costs money, I understand this. You can also find somebody that you trust, like a good friend, or a loved one, or just somebody that you feel you can connect to. And then let them know how you're feeling. Let them know your thought process behind everything that's going on and why you're feeling this way. Letting people know that you're feeling uncomfortable, letting people know that you need emotional support is useful because then you can open a dialogue to discuss more personalized strategies to help you cope with this situation and any other situations that might be similar that happen again in the future. And honestly, it's just nice to have somebody to talk to who can just validate how you're feeling. And the last strategy is acceptance. We're at the end of a long, hard, emotional road and you're probably feeling just as tired as I am right now. But we're now here, we're now here at the end. We're now at the finish line and this is your best weapon. Now that you have worked through those emotions, now that you have really dug deep, done a lot of self-reflection, validated your own experience, your own feelings, now, now you can feel acceptance with the loss of control. Now you have better knowledge to be able to understand what is going on without assigning blame and now you can simply accept that this has happened. Now you can accept that loss of control has happened and that's okay. <sighs> Take a breath with me. <laughs> On its own, going from starting with the situation that has caused these feelings to acceptance, which is right at the end of the road, is almost impossible with OCPD. This is why you need to give yourself the time, the patience, the forgiveness and the thoughtfulness to really understand what is going on in your head? Why are you feeling this way? And what can you do in future to be able to accept loss of control a little bit easier? The more you work through it, the more you work on yourself, the easier it becomes. That much I can tell you. It does get easier, but it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time and a lot of self-reflection and a lot of forgiveness and love, self-love, you know, you're worth it. Well, we got there eventually, 
my goodness, I felt like, I feel like I've run a marathon. I don't know how you're feeling right now, but whoo boy, whoo, I need to sit down. All right, I'm already sitting down. All right then. Hmm. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Or if you'd like a private discussion, you can email me hi at edenv.com. I'm always up for having a chat over email. I do read comments, so I encourage comments as much as possible. I just do feel overwhelmed sometimes when I have so many comments coming at me. So I am not as consistent with replying on comments as I am replying over email. Please always remember that a video on YouTube is not as good as professional help always check in with a certified and professional practitioner before acting on any advice given by a non-professional. At the end of the day, somebody who is trained in helping you is going to be able to help you more than just a random video on YouTube. I am qualified to talk about these kinds of things. I have a background in psychology and I have two bachelor degrees, so I am qualified to talk about these things, but I'm not qualified to give individual advice. The best person to speak to if you need individual advice is a professional such as a psychologist, a therapist, or a psychiatrist. Somebody who is professional and can actually help you with individual help and is qualified to do so. Remember, I'm just an ethereal video on the internet, so I can't give actual tailored, professional tailored advice. So that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you could give me a like, maybe subscribe too, to let me know that you appreciate my content just as much as I appreciate you being here with me. That would be awesome. Well, as always, my name is Eden. I have lots of ideas. I'll see you in the next video to talk about another one. Ta-ta!